Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm making birria nachos. I figure with the Super Bowl coming up, some of you may be looking for a way to elevate your usual party fare, and this is definitely going to accomplish that. Just picture crispy homemade tortilla chips piled high with delicious marinated beef, melted cheese, and all sorts of other yumminess. I hope you're ready for it. Rather than go over a long list of all that's gonna be going on our nachos, I figured I'd just share what you're going to need to make the birria, because let's face it, that's the MVP today. And uh, I'll put everything that you need in the description box beneath this video. We're going to be slow cooking this in my crock pot, so uh, keep in mind this is something that you can make the night before to save time, or maybe you can make it in your Instapot. Either way, I'm gonna kick things off with a four pound chuck roast. I've got eight New Mexico red chili pods and two pasilla negro, but you can also use a pasilla ancho. You'll need half of a white or yellow onion, three garlic cloves, one tablespoon Mexican oregano, one tablespoon cumin, one and a half teaspoon kosher salt, half a teaspoon thyme, one cinnamon stick, one to two bay leaves, and some olive oil. So let's go ahead and get started. This meat has been rinsed clean and patted dry with paper towels, and I'm going to cut it into smaller, more manageable pieces, removing any fat as I go. I season generously on all sides with salt. Then I'm going to sear the meat in a hot skillet that's been coated with olive oil. I'm just getting it lightly browned on all sides to lock in the juices, and then I transfer it to a crock pot that's been set to low. As that's starting to heat, add a little more oil to the same skillet, toss in the chili pods, the onion, and the garlic, and let them fry for a few minutes, just flipping them as they cook. As soon as you see char marks, pour in some hot water. This is not quite two cups, although you don't need to measure. You just want enough water for the chili pods to soak in and begin to soften. Then turn off the burner and let it sit for five to 10 minutes. Once the chili has rehydrated and looks like this, Transfer everything that's in the skillet into a blender or food processor, including the liquid. Then add a little more water as necessary. You want enough to almost cover all the ingredients. And I stopped this, not because it's ready, but because I forgot to put the spices in. I'll do that now. And now we'll blend until smooth. Once you have a consistent looking sauce, take it and pour it over the meat in the crock pot. Top with the cinnamon stick and the bay leaves, then cover and let it cook on low for six hours until the meat is fork tender. The whole house smells so good right now, and this meat is now fork tender. It easily 
falls apart as you can see right there. So what I'm going to do is uh, take it up and shred it, but also chop it up. Now, if I was going to be making tacos with this media, I would just shred it and have nice big pieces. But since I want this to fit on a tortilla chip, I gotta make sure that it's a little bit smaller. For these nachos, I'm going to be making my own tortilla chips. You can, of course, buy them at the store. Just make sure that you get some nice, thick, hearty ones because we're gonna put a lot on there and you want them to hold up. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these corn tortillas kind of like a pizza, and then I'm gonna fry them up until crispy. As soon as the tortilla chips are fried, place them on a rack over some paper towels so the excess oil can drain and immediately season them with salt. Now finally, we can assemble our nachos. I've got all my toppings ready, but here's where you can customize it to your liking. I've got a couple of different kinds of cheeses that melt nicely. One is a mild cheddar, the other is Oaxaca, and I'm layering it directly over the tortilla chips. I follow it with some of this mouth-watering birria. I add some pickled jalapenos. And I toss on some olives. I then add a second layer of everything. Then into the oven it goes. I've got mine set to broil so the cheese will melt in no time at all. Wow. Once out of the oven, I've got uh, some Mexican crema, which is a table cream, like sour cream, but a little more runny. I've got some pico de gallo and guacamole that I made earlier. So I'm gonna add them on here real quickly and uh, give it a taste, because I can hardly wait. Now this is a work of art. Too bad I don't have anyone to share it with. Just kidding. <laughs> Would be way too much just for me. Can hardly wait to taste this. So let me give it a try. Let's get a little guacamole on there. Mmm. This may be the best thing I've ever made. It's fantastic. There's something 
so special about slow cooking the meat like this in that sauce. It just picks up all the flavor of the chili. This vidya is fantastic. And you know, you don't have to make your nachos like this, although this is a lot of fun, but you can also do a nacho bar and have people serve individually. So much that you can do with this. I really hope that you try this recipe. I've got some eating to do. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I also invite you to follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.